Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. My name is Mitch, and I'm here with Natsuki. Natsuki, I cannot lift my arm. What higher happened? Than What happened? This. Do you know how to say that in Japanese? How do I say this? Shijugata. Shijugata. Yeah, when people get to 40s, their you know, arm can't raise up. Is there a name of the di- disease? Shijugata too. So, Shijugata. Shijuga, 40, ne? Ah, so does it just mean like 40 years old? Gata te nani? Kata? Kata, shoulder. 40 years old shoulder. Just gonna roll the intro. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened? So, what, happened? what, really, happened yeah, happened was, yeah. okay, what really happened was, what really happened was, is so like, Uh, I got my Halloween costume in the mail like two weeks ago. Okay. And for the school, we all have themed costumes. This year, we're all going to be、uh, Avengers. Avengers? Now, Avengers are superheroes or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> and the funny thing is okay, so we have two funny stories about this. The first one is so we're sitting around the table and we're all trying to like figure out what superhero we're going to be. And like, so one person picks like. Thor, one person picks Flash, one person picks whatever, right? Everybody's picking their, their、uh, various、uh, costumes, right? And everybody's looking at Ricky and everybody's thinking, like, you're gonna be the Hulk, right? <laughs> everybody's like, Ricky, you're gonna be the Hulk, right? You gotta be the Hulk. You're the Hulk, right? And everybody's thinking it, but no one's saying it. And he's just like, who could I be? And everybody's like, dude, you're the fucking Hulk, right? You're the Hulk, right? <laughs> and, and no one's saying it. And so I'm like, Hey, Ricky, who are you going to be? And anyway, I think he's going to be Batman or something. He's not going to be the Hulk, which is really disappointing because Ricky should be the Hulk. You should be the Hulk, Ricky. If you're watching this, you should be the Hulk. <laughs> Why didn't you say it directly <laughs> in the meeting? <laughs> you can do it. And then who are you going to be? I mean, what will you be?、Uh, so,、yeah. so, because I'm, I'm the boss, they're like, you're going to be Captain America. So, I'm going to be Captain America, which is fine, whatever, right? I'm going to be Captain America. Now, here's the problem. The, the, the outfit that I picked is basically like Zenshin Taitsu. Yeah. How do you say Zenshin Taitsu in I English? I think we just call it Zenshin Taitsu in, in English. And so this is basically. In Japanese,、it. right?、You're、I think it's just Japanese. called Zenshin Taitsu. Eh? In English? Maybe. Uso de s h o I don't think we have a word. Full body tights? I don't know, guys.、Oh, okay. Leave me a comment if there's a word for Zenshin、okay. Taitsu in English. Anyway, this is my costume. Now, as you can see, Two things, two things about this costume. One, it's like skin tight. Okay. And two, I have a really, really long torso. I want everybody to notice this. Watch this, watch this. Torso. I have a very long torso. I am like 70% torso. <laughs> okay. And so this is, what, this is what makes me a very good swimmer. I'm a very, very good swimmer because I'm balanced like a swimmer, not like a runner. Can I don't you like、swim? running. Oh, I'm a very good swimmer. Okay. And so,、um, so if you guys can imagine this at home, if you're in full body tights, And your torso is really, really long. The cloth gets pulled up. Okay. And so I basically I took a picture of myself wearing this, like in normal underwear. I put on normal underwear and then I put on the, the, the costume and I took a picture. So I sent it to my number two. And she's like, Yeah, you're going to get arrested if you walk around like that. <laughs> Do you have a picture in you your phone? You don't want to see that. You don't want to see that. It's just you like you can, it's, you can see everything. <laughs> It's like it leaves nothing to the imagination. And I was just like, wow, we can't do this. So then, so then, guys, all right, fans. So then I Googled. I was like, what do Power Rangers do <laughs> when they wear their costumes? Because, Jesus, this is a lot of, this is a lot of me. <clears throat> anyway, what they do, what, what the recommended thing was, was to wear either compression shorts or how do you say in Japanese?、Uh, suye pan. Su- su- suye pan. Su. Yeah, bathing suits, right? Bathing pants. But it's not, it's not. Bathing suit. It's like Speedos. Speedos, yes.、Yeah, so、sure. it's like、yeah. really like. It's like yeah, really, yeah. really compressed. Compressed. So, but we still say the Suye Pants, but I understand that, like a lot of pressure, right? Right, 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 right.、Mm-hmm. So, like, pressure. So, so I tried this, right?、Mm-hmm. And I tried various combinations of things to kind of <laughs> smash it down so you didn't see it, right? <clears throat> and I, and anyway, I, I, I finalized on I have to wear three different pairs of shorts. I have to wear. Really tight underwear. Then I have to wear like some, another pair of tight underwear. And then I have to wear <laughs> compression shor- shorts. And then you can't kind of see it. It's still kind of visible, but it's less visible. What would you do when you go pee, you know, while you were wearing that? Wait, wait, that wait. So, so I have to do a parade. We're doing、yeah. a parade through the downtown area. So I'm、yeah. going to be outside. I'm going to look like that. Yeah. 
And I'm like, so that's the daytime Mitch. And then nighttime Mitch, I'm going to fuck Fukuoka going to go clubbing. I think at that time, I'm just going to like, fuck it, wear normal underwear. Because it's going to be dark. You're not going to be able to see it, probably. And so probably. anyway, so as I was trying to figure out how to hide the stuff, okay, I was like constantly getting in and out of this costume that has a zipper on the back. And so I kept reaching. I can't do it with my right arm, but I was doing this with my right arm. I was like reaching behind and like pulling the zipper up. And then on one of my tries to do it, I overextended my arm and it went like and like <laughs> pulled something. So I can't actually like lift up my arm past about here. We say the nikubanare in Japanese. Nikubanare is like, like muscle. Strain. Yeah, strain. Yeah, yeah nikubanare. That's it. So anyway, hmm. so then I'm like, so, so this is the second time something like this has happened to me. Yeah. The very first time this happened to me, I was in university. So a long time ago. Okay. And my girlfriend at the time was sleeping on my bicep on my arm. And we woke up the next morning and I couldn't move my arm. It had pinched a nerve in my arm. And so yesterday I actually mailed her. I was like, hey, don't say her name. You always say people's name. Don't say her name. <laughs> I was like, hey, do you remember back in university when you when I didn't say you, I said when we pinched the nerve in my arm because you know we were sleeping together. And she was like, blah, 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 blah. yeah, I remember that. And so, yes, yeah, so this has happened second time. Beautiful memory. Not a beautiful memory. Because I, I could, because that time, so this time I just can't lift up my arm without it being really, really painful. So this sucks. But that time I couldn't move my arm at all. I was driving with one arm. I had to take notes with my left hand. And it took like a week and a half for my feeling to come back in my arm. It was really scary. So your, your right hand is not your kikite. How do you say that? No, no, no. My, my dominant hand is my right hand. I'm right handed. Oh, so, Miki so, Kiki, right so but still, you drive with, with your left hand and you write the notes with your left hand? I tried. Wow. I drove. I drove. That's no problem. But writing, it was like, okay. It was like, I think I wrote this. I don't know. It was really hard. <laughs> it was really hard. It took me a long time. Anyway, so like, so now my arm is all screwed up and I can't go to the gym. I'm really sad. And I lost weight. I, okay, guys, I, my goal is to be 80 kilograms, right? I, I was 73. Now I'm 69 kilograms. <laughs> How? How? Well, I know how because the last week or so I haven't been like keeping my schedule because I it's like my work has been uh, both of my uh, companies are, have a week off this last week. So I've just been basically sleeping until like 3 p.m. every day. And so like I wake up, I eat breakfast and then I eat lunch like two hours later and then I eat dinner like two hours after that. So I've been doing nantoka uh, fasting. What's it called? Ma Intermittent fasting in English. Like you don't eat for 12 hours or like 18 that. hours. Because like, I'm hours. just eating really short. Yeah period of time yeah and so like that's just been naturally happening these last few days so i've been losing weight and i'm not happy about this i'm not happy i'm trying to gain weight not lose weight you know anyway mm. let's get to the news okay japanese man who spent 46 <laughs> years on death row cleared of murders no it's n nothing that i laugh about but your segue was <laughs> okay all right okay so, so Iwao very serious, ha serious hakamada news. was was found not gu guilty of his 1966 murder of his boss and his family after a retrial was ordered a decade ago so the details of this are kind of like all over the place but basically a uh, long long time ago he used to be a professional boxer he's like the former professional boxer spent 46 years on death row believed to be the longest time spent on death row of any prisoner worldwide until he was f freed in 2014 when new evidence emerged and a retrial was ordered so uh, he constantly pro pro protested his innocence and said investigators forced him to confess while his lawyers uh, alleged police had fabricated evidence, which happens all the time in Japan. Because he still he spends his life in jail for right. 46 years, yeah. 20 years. I can remember. 46. 46. I just said it. 46 years. Right, right. Well, okay. So he turn the, the, the crime turns out that he's uh, innocent. innocent. Yeah. But he still... His life is gone, right? Right? It could be a movie. It's probably going to be a mo movie, right? Yeah. So he was freed, and then uh, due to the retrial, he was cleared of all all, uh, of all wrongdoing. So. And his sister is 91 years old. And, and then... she protested his innocence this whole... There, there she is on screen. Right. And she protested his innocence this entire, this entire time. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. So, guys, if you're in Japan and you get don't first of all don't do anything bad when you're here. Of course, because that's just yeah. But you know who knows the truth now, dude. So wait, wait, wait. I just yeah. remembered something. So I was like coming out of my apartment today, mm -hmm. and like there was like a I think he's a tourist. There was like some random white guy like standing on the bottom of my uh, apartment, like using the otoroku, the the auto lock to come up to go inside the building. 
And I recently learned this, but in my, we call it mansion tower, but it's a condominium tower or apartment tower. There is a men's esthetician like salon in my building, which is basically code word for a, you know, rub and tug. And so like this dude was on like the first floor of my apartment. I was like, oh, dude, I know where you're going. But then I thought about it afterwards. He probably thought I was coming out of there. Yeah. I was like, motherfucker, I live here. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you find out that there is such a place? So I had a apartment? home party like three or four weeks ago yeah. and I was inviting people and I looked on. I tried to send them a Google Maps pin and I was like zooming up on my apartment and it's all like men's men's estate. And I was like, What's this? What's this? So oh, I clicked yeah. on it and I clicked on the website and like, uh, no matter what, I don't, I'm not going to dox where I live, but like, no, if you look at the homepage of it, it's just like, it's like all these girls and you can only see like here and they have like kamisoru on and you can see like the top of their tits and it's like, you can pick their costume for like 2000 yen. I'm like, okay, whatever. Hey, so maybe, you know, that tool is found out that information on the internet and then just try that. Wow. I mean, whatever. Have fun. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not illegal. Have, have have fun. I just thought it was weird. Mm. Like looking at it, I was just like, <laughs> like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you, know, I, you didn't even talk with him. Of course, no. <laughs> so here we go. Here we go. The top comment on this is uh, for the the murder trial. And the guys who tortured, raped, and uh, c uh, cemented a girl in a drum did not get jail jail this jailed this long. One of them even got to commit yet another crime after being freed from jail. So there was a story a long, long time ago of these kids who like raped and murdered and put a girl in a drum with cement through an, through an, either the ocean or river or something like that. And they all got super light sentences. They didn't mm. even, they didn't even get death row. And this guy, this poor man has been on death row for 46 years. It's just fucked up. Ah, back to the, the if you, if you come to Japan, the way that uh, Japanese, the Japanese conviction rate, Japanese conviction rate is, uh, here we go. There it is, 99.9%. Now, the only way that you get a conviction rate like this is if you're doing something bad. So the Japanese government, police and investigators are generally good. The uh, police officers are generally good people, but prosecutors are not. And they get paid based upon they get paid and they get promoted based upon how many people they put in jail. So their incentive is to put people in jail, whether or not they're innocent or guilty. So what they do is they force confessions, Japanese forced confession. There is a documentary about this you guys can watch. I think it's on YouTube. Maybe it's on uh, Netflix, but it's disgusting. Um, the Japanese uh, justice system is completely fucked up. Why? Yeah, no, no, it's terrible. So mm. on, on, so, uh, there's a documentary on this, but I just, I just, I just Google this and this has seven months ago. It's only got a thousand views, but this is like Japanese hostage justice system, guilty un until proven innocent. So the way that this works is that the, in, in the Japanese law, they can arrest you in serial Japanese, uh, arrest serial. So the way that this works, uh, arrest, f hold on a second, uh, jailed max, um, days. So, so if you are suspected of a crime, you the Japanese police can arrest you and put you in jail for 23 days. Mm. Okay, no lawyer. You can't get. There's no phone call. There's nothing. In fact, there have been uh, reports of people who they think have gone missing, but they've actually just been arrested. Okay, so this is like Stalin, like. USSR like KGB level scary shit. Listen to me guys. So what they'll do is if if you get arrested, they'll put you in jail for 23 days and they'll let you go if they can't find if they can't get you to confess to something. They'll torture you for this 23 days to try to get you to confess to something you didn't do. Or if you did do it, they'll try to get you to confess or whatever. So they'll put you in jail for 23 days. Now here's the thing. There's a loophole so if they charge you with like <clears throat> like a hundred different things, so you get like a hundred different charges, they can just release you after 23 days and immediately rearrest you for another 23 days and another 23 days and another 23. They can keep doing this infinitely <clears throat> until you confess to a crime to make it stop. This is what happened to Gon. 
Do you remember Gon? Oh, hi, hi. Mm. This is what happened. Nissan, no, no? Nissan CEO, mm. who basically rescued Nissan and made Nissan a profitable company. The Japanese who were in charge that, the, that were below him didn't like this because they were racist Japanese. And they're like, we're going to set him up for, for to, to be taken down. So they set him up. They blackmailed him. Uh, uh, allegedly. Allegedly. They, they blackmailed him. And then the police, they used the police as a, as, a, as a weapon against him to put him in jail over and over and over again, basically screwing up his entire life. So that's how they were paid a uh, goal for, for re restructuring and making Nissan a profitable company, which is really, really ridiculous. So if you ever get arrested in Japan, don't talk to the police. Just sit there and wait. I mean, you're just going to have to wait forever, but that's how it works. And that's the shitty thing. That is the shitty thing about the Japanese justice system. Now, here's the good part. In order to get arrested in Japan, it takes a lot of effort. Like it's, it's they don't just arrest people. Like in America, I think it's a lot easier to get arrested, uh, but then you get released afterwards. In Japan, it's really, really hard to get arrested, but because they only basically arrest people that they know that they can get a conviction of. Mm. So, but at the same time, it needs to be reformed. The Japanese justice system is complete. That scares me. I think that's the, of all the things in Japan. I love Japan. I love the country. I love the people. I love living here. I love working here. It's, it's, it's a beautiful place. That's the one thing. That's the two things that I want to change about Japan. One, the justice system needs to be absolutely reformed. So it's, it's actually humane and it's in, in line with the rest of the world. Cause right now it's barbaric. It's backward. It's stupid. And the second thing I'd kick out all the fucking elected officials who are over the age of 50. Hmm. If you're over the age of 50, they don't understand what's going on in the world. I don't think that they should be leaders. Hmm. So anyway. So in this case, he sacrificed his life to jail right yeah. so the 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 company i mean japan is going to pay him yeah, like maybe but i it, it depends i mean that's going to be found out from now on but here's the bad thing the prosecutors that put him in jail should have their entire lives put in they should be all sh should be put in jail in my right opinion. i think mm -hmm. if you're a prosecutor this is how i would update the law in japan if you're a prosecutor and you wrongfully get somebody to, to admit to a crime you should go to jail for the length of that crime that's right then they'll stop doing that shit mm -hmm. once it once it becomes a problem for them then they'll start doing it Anyway, let's move on. Tokyo housing vacancies rise with record 646,800 uh, 646, empty homes. So basically, uh, this is kind of posted here. So, <clears throat> so uh, there were, there were do, 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 across the 26 wards in central Tokyo last year, there was over half a million of vacant homes. Uh, and that's basically it. The, the percentage of abandoned homes, which exclude vacant homes and residents available for rent, came up to be 5.9% across all of Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, in Osaka, it was, uh, let's see, in Tokyo, it was t almost 11%. In Osaka, it's 16%. Shizuoka, 15%. And uh, almost 14% in Sapporo. Uh, even in Tokyo, that's happening. Yeah, people mm -hmm. are, because, and then the top comment on this is, uh, with well, the country's pop, uh, total population fell by almost the same amount of uh, not, amount of people last year, so it doesn't seem so shocking, which is mm, true. Yeah, it doesn't seem so shocking because, you know, even in, I, I thought, you know, still Tokyo, there was too many people because, you know, everybody moved from countryside, right, to yeah. Tokyo. But still, they have yeah. a lot of, you know. Because they had house. a lot, a lot of uh, housing built during the bubble, right? So mm. there's a lot of housing in Tokyo. Yeah. So this next story, uh, so Japanese destroyer inadvertently entered Chinese waters, captain sacked. So the long and short of this is that um, a captain uh, was not paying attention, apparently, and the, uh, the Japanese Navy entered Jap uh, Chinese waters, and they came within 12 nautical miles of the coast of Zhengjian. I don't know how to read Chinese, uh, pr uh, province. So this was inadvertent. So this wasn't on purpose. This was not trying to provoke the Chinese. And then so when he got back, the they, they fired him. He, got he fired. was sleepy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Why did that happen? He just was not aware the ship had sailed into off-limits area. He was thinking other things. He's probably just, I don't know, just probably not doing his job. Mm. Uh... It just lack out. of training, lack of understanding. Okay. So that's it. And so he got sacked. And then the top comment on this is like, usually these incidents happen within disputed areas, but this one, this one was different because it came within like mainland China. Mm. I mean, this could have started a war if, if you weren't careful. Mm. So he was fired. Uh, in a different U.S. Uh, sorry, Japanese Navy uh, story, Japan Defense Force ship sails through the Taiwan Strait for the first time. So if you guys haven't been paying attention to global politics recently, the uh, Japan and America are gearing up for war with China over Taiwan, which we all hope doesn't happen. Taiwan. Yeah, we Straight. all. 
Don't want to happen. So there's the Taiwanese Strait, which I'm going to put on the screen in just a second. Give me a second here. And you, once you see this, you'll understand why this is actually a really, really big deal. Taiwan, if you guys don't know, is a little island nation that is a nation. It's its own nation. Fuck you, China. It's its own little nation off the coast of China. Uh, it used to be the 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 dominant uh, political people in power in China. Then they had their little re uh, 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 revolution and then they all escaped to Taiwan and, and they made the the the, Ty the the country, the nation of Taiwan there. So China doesn't recommend, re uh, recognize Taiwan as a, as a nation. Taiwan is a nation, according to them. The United States has a weird policy where they kind of acknowledge Taiwan, but they kind of don't. It's kind of stupid. Anyway, so here's the Taiwanese Strait right here. And if you look on a global map of this, this is right up the alley of, let's go Google Maps. This is right up the alley of, of Japan. And so um, it's actually quite, uh, do, do, do. hold on, let me put it on here. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Okay, so if you look at the, so here's the Taiwanese Strait right here. Here we are in Kyushu. See, I got all these little stuff on there. Um, so this is where that, that, um, Chinese warship traveled through right here. Because if you're gonna defend Ch Taiwan from China, you're gonna have to put boats here. Mm. Okay, so that's what they're currently like, I don't wanna say practicing, but that's what they're kind of you know doing now. Now this happened because... Uh, do, 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 do. Why? It sounds scary. It's kind of scary. The whole idea here is to prevent a war. Um, and so... So they didn't comment on it, but I think this is having to do with. Uh, 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 uh. One of the, I don't think it's Kushida, but one of the higher ups in Japan is getting a little bit more uh, bullish about protecting the Japanese waters and, and extending out into Chinese, uh, like areas where Chinese, Chinese ships are, are, are contesting areas. The United States constantly sends warships through that strait. That's no, we do it all the time, but yeah. So anyway, so that's happening. So the idea here is to show China, because China has a, a navy. They have a navy, but their navy is kind of shit. It's not really that great. And so um, compared to the United States Navy anyways, and the Japanese Navy is actually second in the world. I saw them. Yeah, it's, it's second in the world. And so if there's a war, hopefully there isn't, because China has nukes and America has nukes and Japan secretly has nukes. You got, has nukes. Well, I mean, they might have little American flags on them, but they're in Japan. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so everybody's got nukes. So if we go to a hot war, it might be problematic. But uh, yeah, so w w hopefully that doesn't happen. So there was a TV drama last week and a Japanese family time travel to back to, you know, 1940s mm -hmm. in, during the World War II. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, spent some time there and then next moment they came back to, you know, the real time, but still we are having, you know, war. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, so the, the, the point is, you know, war could happen anytime. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? So I was kind of scared. You, you, you got to understand something, Natsuki. I, yeah. I always I always love doing the show with you because I feel like I, I, I teach you about the world. <laughs> the, the world right now is in a weird era of peace okay okay and the reason why we have peace is what's called the nuclear umbrella mm -hmm. so there's this concept called the nuclear umbrella which means that because all the big big countries big boy countries have nukes okay, okay. so you have america canada all these all these countries here have nukes okay and so they all have a treaty with each other that if we ever go to war, we're all going to nuke each other. Mm. So everybody dies. So we don't want to do that. So no. all the big countries, the big boy countries have not gone into direct conflict with each other since World War II. Mm. Okay. Now, that's good because we have this period of peace. But it's also bad because at any given time, we actually might go into a hot nuclear war. So there's this, uh, there's this fall. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scare you. Nuke scene. So where people, you know, are going to escape to universe? <laughs> no, there's really not. It's not really a. So there's this. There's this uh, 
TV show that's on, I think, Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. It's based on a video game and it's called Fallout. And they have this scene. I can only show a second of this because it'll get it'll get copywritten. But it's like Los Angeles getting nuked. Oh, no. And this this scene is so fucking realistic. Yeah. And like the thing about if 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 we go to nuclear war it's not going to be one or two the way that the 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 big countries like russia and 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 the united states have their nukes they calculated the how many nukes they need to 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 destroy a city not based upon like fallout or anything like that but based upon the fire blast of each bomb so each one of the major cities of the world will not get nuked once not twice like 40 or 50 times mm-hmm. So the amount of like shit that goes into the atmosphere after that happens, that's just the end of the world. And then where where people go to escape like underground? Maybe or... some of them. Okay. But I mean, that's game over. There was game a there was over. a scientific research paper that was released because Pakistan and India both have nukes and they don't like each other because, mm. you know, one's Hindu, the other one's Muslim and they don't like each other. And so there was a study like, okay, let's say that Pakistan and India just kind of fling some nukes at each other. What would happen? The amount of dust that would go up into the atmosphere would cause crop failures at farms across the world. And so I forgot how many people would die. People would die globally if India and... So that's like the start of World War Three. Okay. Help me Google. Estimated... So they were talking about something like 120 million people would die depending on whether it would blah, blah, blah. But then like the fallout and all of that shit, uh, they were talking like maybe a billion people around the world. Over two, there we go. Over two billion would die in an India-Pakistan nuclear war. Hmm. Two billion. So that's like, you know, a big part of the global population would just die. And that's not even getting hit with the nuke. That's just dust in the atmosphere causing no food. Hmm. So we don't want to do that. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Of course not. So we're we're in a weird yeah. peace time right now because everybody can we can basically kill all humans on the on the planet. So we don't want to do that. I worry about my kids' future. Mm. I don't have kids. Okay, let's do something fun. <laughs> Nintendo Muse- Museum in Kyoto unveiled with iconic games ahead of opening. So hey. so basically, it's got all these like real retro games. I have these in my living room. I don't see what the big deal is. So they have all these cool like retro games that you can play. I have this. I have that. Oh, that's cool. Museum. So, but the really cool thing about this museum is that this has been all over the internet. Is that they have gachapon uh, keychains that are shaped like old school controllers mm, for Nintendo. Yeah, it looks familiar to me. Yes. Yeah, mm. So this is a, the top here is a super as a Famicom for Japan. The bottom one is a S, uh, the NES for America. And so yeah, you can get these out of the little gachapon things. Oh, they opened it already. No, I think Not they're yet. opening. When do they open? Let's see. Do, do, do. They, they open so maybe people will go October to 2nd October 2nd in Universal Kyoto. Studio to you know that's uh, what they're hoping enter, yeah entertain that 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 Super Mario World and then go to the museum that's what they're hoping that's what they're okay. hoping and I think it's cool all right, let's go to one of your favorite types of subjects. 54-year-old male teacher received pay cut for making sexually suggestive comments towards a female student and talking about brothels in class. What do you mean that that my favorite? Section? Every time we talk about like sexual harassment or rape or something like that, you just get depressed. So there was a teacher, he's 56 or 54, and he was telling a 16-year-old girl, "I love you. You can get married when you turn 60." Us, uh, she's 15. You can get married when you turn 16, right? And then adding Chan to her name, which you shouldn't if you're a teacher, especially in a I guess it's a high school. You shouldn't call people Chan. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. It always happens yep. in Japan. I and don't know why. He says, according to Os- Osaka Prefectural Board of Education, since the beginning of April this year, the 54-year-old male teacher had repeatedly engaged in making several inappropriate remarks and behaviors, such as talking about brothels and love hotels during class in order to win his students' favor. Uh. As a result, the male teacher was imposed a one-month pay cut by the Osaka Prefectural Board of Education. And that's all. <sighs> I worry about my kids' future. I mean, you have two daughters. Mm-hmm. So talking about girls. Okay. So uh, a rapper Lee Bu Karma uh, criticized Japan's, uh, what is it called? Moe anime culture. 
And he also talked about how it's really gross that so many 2D, 2D anime lowly con hobby, hobbyists are pretending to be proud to be a proud Jap- to be proud Japanese culture. Oh, I like him. Yeah. So I, 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 have you ever heard his, you know, rap? No, before? I don't like Japanese rap. He, okay. Sucks. <laughs> okay. He he is actually good. Okay. He's yeah. uh, funny. <laughs> so anyway, so if you guys don't know this, there's a lot of like. In the anime, like weeaboo culture world, in like the otaku world of anime yeah. and like uh, manga, they they push the envelope. They'll be like, they'll be like a like a hundred and fifty year old woman in the body of like a four year old, and then they'll sexualize her. It's like weird shit like that all the time, and it's weird. Anyway, the thing that he was criticizing was this: this is like weird train with this kind of shit. Does this is moe moe mm. anime, right? Mm. Like. More like sister character, like younger sister character. You want to character. protect her kind of thing? Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Like little know. kitty. I don't do mm-hmm. anime. I don't fucking understand it. I'm sorry. That's a that's a that's a Ricky thing. <laughs> <laughs> All you? right. Let's uh let's close today on a kind of fun story that okay. isn't about Sounds rape like or, or yeah. nuclear war. Yeah. Rare it's not rare, it's actually just rare. Rare Pokemon card sold for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars at Sotheby's. So it's a uh so this is a part of a 30, how many was in this? 39 official copies of this card. Uh, and this is the only one that's known to be signed by the illustrator. And it fetched uh, $360,000. In 2021, a different card was purchased for $5.2 million. Winning recognition by the Guinness World Records uh, the following year for most expensive Pokemon and card ever. Who is it? Less later? Is he famous? Uh, Takumi Akabane, one of the three founders of the trading card game. So one oh, of the three founders of Pokemon. I see. Yeah. So it's so, a yeah. premium card. Good job, guys. $360,000 for a card. Wow. I don't get you people. <laughs> wow. It's it, it worth. Do you have people. like, Naka, so you hamateru, hamari mono ga aru. Do you have Me? like something that you really love like that? No. Never. I, how about like, uh, you love Smap. Yeah, but I don't pay a lot of money for them. I went to some concerts, but That's I didn't all. really buy you know, the goods. Mm-hmm. I just enjoy the moment there, you know? Yeah. There's nothing that I'm obsessed over. I don't get it. But you buy a lot of you know, stuff from, you know, Merukari. I'm stuff. just bored. So I go, so I bought shit from my childhood. Like I bought Mario. I have a pristine Mario paint yeah. with the box and the original wrapper and everything. I have a super scope. Do you know what a super scope is? Super. I think I do. I think I did have one when I was a kid. I spent my otoshidama to buy, you know, that. Your otoshidama. Yeah. Your New your Year's, Year's gift. Money, money. Allowance. I don't know what to call it. But yeah, I, I have, quote it, a super scope. This. Oh, yeah. I, I, is this, yeah. Oh, this, this was not it. This was not something that I saw in my mind. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> All right, Natsuki, that's been our episode today. Hey, guys, if you want to support this show, you can find our Patreon link in the in the underneath the, what is it called? In the description, description of the video. Description. I am out of it today. I'm a little bit sleepy. It's because I can't lift my arm. Because. Anyway, because. guys, that's been our show today. We'll see you guys next week. Comment if you like the show. Comment if you didn't like the show. Like and subscribe. Turn on the notifications so you, already get, you always get notified when we drop a new show, which is every week. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.